Okay, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to edit this photo from this to this. Just doing a quick moody edit uh, using Darktable, a free alternative to Adobe Lightroom. So one of the things you need to know about shooting moody photos is it's not all about the edit. You've also gotta have the right kind of lighting in the photo to make sure that it becomes a moody photo. Like it's gotta be moody in real life to make it like really nice and moody in the edit as well. Yeah, you can do some editing things to take like a bright sunshiny photo and make it that really moody and dark and cool. But to really make like a really good moody photo that really has the vibes, that's where you really want it to be in life moody as well as, you know, in the edit moody. And in the case of this photo, that means that the light is coming basically straight down because you can see on either side there is walls because this is like a little alleyway. So it's kind of very toppy lighting coming down from the top. And there's a lot of like good shadows on the side. It's fairly evenly lit overall, but there is like some good separation between like the lighter parts where Nicole is, my wife, and kind of the less well lit parts. And so it's kind of that contrast where you really get it. And this is gonna be kind of a creepy moody vibe because you've got like these nice colors with the like sunshine and the reds and the pinks and the yellows and the blues. I've got some of my favorite modules in the favorites tab here. Um, so first I would normally go to exposure and just get the exposure set where I want. But since we're already pushing the highlights there and the black points already looking pretty good there, I'm actually gonna leave the exposure alone. Now, what I wanna do is kind of look at just the contrast, the curve, uh, the RGB curve module here. And one thing I like to do to make a photo moody is use one of the presets to contrast high, the gamma 2.2. So what this is gonna do is this, it's gonna overexpose. Like you can see there, it's gonna be way too hot. So we're gonna back off the exposure until we lose our overexposed indicators there. Oh, one more, one more, come on. I'm scrolling back on the wheel, so if you're on a slider, you can scroll up or back on the mouse wheel, and that'll give you small increments. So that's pretty good. We're bringing the skin tones back to normal. So the next thing we can do, I still feel like there's a little bit too much brightness on my wife's forehead here. So what I wanna do is I've got a preset on the shadows and highlights module called highlights only and it just decreases the highlights using the bilateral filter. The Gaussian filter is actually the default. I like the look of the bilateral. I don't know what the technical difference is. So if you flip that on and off, you see it just makes a little bit of a change there. So the next thing I'd like to do is actually, we're just gonna do a little bit of a, uh, a mask around Nicole. And the way we, and I'm gonna use the exposure module for this. So we're gonna do, click this multiple instances actions button and do a new instance. And I'm gonna do a drawn mask. I'm gonna do the one where you can pick, it's basically the kind of like the pen tool in Photoshop or the path tool in, in GIMP. Just clicking out a little mask here in some spots. Okay, so cool. So we've got this nice mask. This spot obviously needs a little bit of work because that's going crazy. It's probably this one. That's the problem, yeah. Oh, wait. come back here. There we go. We need to make this a lot smaller. Sometimes these control points can get hard to work with because the uh, stemmy bits <laughs> that you click on, they can be outside the picture sometimes. So it makes it a little difficult sometimes. Okay, cool. Uh, and if you wanna add a control point somewhere, you can press the control button and just add a spot that you want to Put a little bit more into, uh, just control a little bit more finely. Okay, so right now 
everything inside these control points is being controlled uh, by whatever the module is going to do. And I'm actually going to decrease the, satur the saturation, the exposure. But I don't want to decrease the exposure on the coal. I want to decrease the exposure on everything else. So what we do here is press this button, which means toggle polarity of the drawn mask. And that means it's just going to flip what's effective, affected. So now you can see Nicole is very nicely shining, uh, very, you know, uh, concentrated there. And it's a little bit too much, like the effect is too strong. So what we're going to do here is actually increase the feathering quite a bit, the distance between these, the dotted line and the solid line. And that controls the gradient between what's 100% affected and what's 0% affected. So I'm holding the shift button and I'm scrolling back on the scroll wheel. And I think that I'm just decreasing the exposure too much because I don't want it to be super duper obvious. You could also do this kind of same effect with uh, a couple of gradient filters. This is just one way to do, to do it. I feel like that's still a little bit too much. But what I, I'm going to increase the feathering some more. And I might even go back and change my mind completely. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to bring the overall exposure down a little bit. Um, now these highlights are still bugging me. So what I think I really need to do is just come into the curve and just bring it down a little bit. Okay, that feels a lot better to me. So right now, we're like most of the way there, I'd say. This one's a little bit darker. I'm not going to do it precisely absolutely the same. Uh, you can see here I've done it a little bit differently. I've taken a little bit of different mm, approach to it. Color zones, we can do color zones. Retouch, that was a failed experiment. Spot removal, we'll do some of that. Okay. And as you can see, we're pretty much all the way here as far as getting it nice and moody. So what I'm going to do is actually use the color zones module. Uh, what you can do is grab this eyedropper with the plus sign on it, click and drag over an area that you want to work with those specific colors in, and it creates five little dots on here. So you want to grab the middle dot and drag that wherever you want it to go. In my case, I want to drag it more orange. So what I'm trying to do is get the magenta in her skin just to be more orange instead of magenta, essentially. My computer is just struggling right now. It's really annoying. Uh, click that plus sign eyedropper again to bring up the selection box again. It draws on those boxes. I'm just gonna bring the saturation down of that orange, well, magenta. And those two things together kind of help it blend in a little bit better. So basically, uh, that's it. Uh, that's everything that you need to do to make a nice and moody photo. Uh, you can do a few things like spot removal. If my computer can think fast enough, computer's not thinking very quickly. You can do a few things to clean that up. Um, her eyes are pretty dark. So one thing that I, I would do is come to the contrast brightness saturation tool, uh, do a drawn mask here and just do, oh, you got a ginormous brush and uh, make it pretty small with a pretty good amount of feathering. Just draw there over one eye and draw there over the other eye. And what we're gonna do here is just decrease the contrast a little bit and increase the brightness a little bit. That'll make the eyes not quite so dark. Can we, oh, negative four even. Just do a little before and after. Uh, let's do a little bit more. There we go, negative nine. Maybe we can get negative 10, there we go. Uh, do a little bit of brightness, probably don't need too much. Uh, that's probably gonna be too much. So let's just zoom out and just look at the eyes with just the contrast. Off and on. Even that contrast is probably too much. So I'm gonna right click the triangle. I'm gonna type in negative 0.5. There we go, and that's what I want. You know, it needs a little bit more than that still, though, because that's hardly even noticeable. Okay, so just a little bit of a glow. A lot of times when I'm doing moody photos, I'll decrease the saturation overall as well. Um, 
I need since this module has a mask attached to it, that means I need to create a new instance of this module, just brand new, you know, and I would do just, you know, native 10 or so, negative 0.10 saturation or negative 0.15 saturation, something not too much. But given the fact that this is already pretty desaturated as the picture stands, I'm just gonna let it go as is, just let it be what it is. So I'm actually gonna delete this. But that's, to make a moody photo, that's something else you can do is just decrease the saturation by just a bit. Well, I hope that you found that helpful. Um, that was a, just kind of a short, quick edit. And remember, when you're trying to make a moody photo, it takes more than editing. It takes the actual location to be pretty moody too. You can't just create it in post necessarily. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, leave me a comment down below what kind of editing videos you'd like in the future with Darktable or maybe with GIMP. I'm not as good with GIMP. Uh, if you like the video, it's helpful. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I hope you keep watching my videos.